the cross, at the cross, at the cross, at the cross where, where I first, first saw the saw light, the light and, the burden and the burden of my heart. Of my heart. Sun. Well, the sun in the darkness, in the darkness high, high, and shut and shut his glory yeah. when Christ Drops of grief, but drops of grief can never repay the death of love I owe. Heal, Lord, I give myself away. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come this day realizing we all need a closer walk with you. God, we need a closer walk with you in worship, especially as we navigate our way through this pandemic. God, we need a closer walk with you in word and sacrament. For God, as we come and engage in this service of word and sacrament, God, it's been a moment since we've been able to hear the word and share the sacraments in person. And so God, for some this morning, uh, this moment feels a little strange. But we ask this morning, God, that you draw us closer to you and do not allow this moment this worship this time of hearing your preach word and sharing in your sacrament do not gracious lord let it be a moment that feels extremely strange to us help us god to feel close to you and to one another as we worship you virtually, as we share in the hearing of your word virtually, as we share in the taking of your sacrament virtually, we ask God, allow us to feel 
an in-person closeness, not just to you, but to one another. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen and praise God.
say down through the years the Lord's been good to me This morning, I'd like to call attention to Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 29 through 31b. I shall read this text as it appears in the New King James Version of the Bible. Mark 1, 29 through 31b reads as follows. Now, as soon as they had come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever, and they told him about her at once. So he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her. I want to preach this morning remembering the notable first. Remembering the notable first. If you don't mind, how about looking at somebody and say, neighbor, we ought to remember the notable first. The gospel writer Mark in the text is doing what some African Americans do during Black History Month. Black History Month is a time when black people who celebrate black history focus on a list of people whom they should remember. Mark in Mark 1 is focusing on a list of people that Mark feels should be remembered. Mark in the text focuses on Simon's mother-in-law. It is very easy, my brothers and sisters, to think that the reason Mark is focusing on Simon's mother-in-law is because Simon's mother-in-law was healed by Jesus. Mark tells us that when Jesus and his entourage got to Simon's mother-in-law house, he was told that Simon's mother-in-law was flat on her back in the bed And what Jesus did is Jesus went straight to where she was, and Jesus gave her a miracle. Jesus lifted her up off of her sickbed. And it is very easy to think, as we look at this story, that the reason Mark put this story in Mark's gospel is because Mark wanted to highlight the miracle. But my brothers and my sisters, I want you to know that Mark wanted to do more than just highlight the miracle. Mark wanted to highlight Peter's mother-in-law as one of the first. Simon's mother-in-law was one of the first in her community whom Jesus raised from being flat on her back. Simon's mother-in-law was one of the first that Jesus lifted out of her struggles. And so as we come 
this day, I say to us this morning that when it comes to black history, there's nothing wrong with lifting those people who have done something that's noteworthy. It is a biblical practice to lift people who've done something that's worth remembering. I don't know about you all, but occasionally I run into folk who raise the question, why y'all make all the fuss? Why y'all make all the fuss about black people during Black History Month? Why you got to take a whole month and focus attention on your people? Well, my brothers and my sisters, I want you to know it's biblical, which is to say it's all right to remember the practices of people who did something that was worth something. I am quite sure this morning that many of us can remember somebody who did something that was noteworthy in our lives or noteworthy in our communities or noteworthy in our school, noteworthy in who we are None of us have gotten where we are all by ourselves. The truth of the matter is somebody along the way helped us. And so when it came to telling the story of Jesus, Mark says, you know what? I can't forget Simon's mother-in-law. Simon's mother-in-law did something that was noteworthy. Simon's mother-in-law shaped who people thought Jesus was. Simon's mother-in-law shaped what folk thought about Jesus in her community. Simon's mother-in-law was not just somebody who appeared in Mark 1, but she was somebody who was important because when it came to the miracles of Jesus in her community, she had a hand in shaping what folk believed and what folk thought about who Jesus was. They came to know Jesus as a miracle worker. And they perhaps would not have been able to say Jesus is a miracle worker. Has it not been for Simon's mother-in-law? Simon's mother-in-law was sick. The story says Simon's mother-in-law was knocked out by a fever. But then the Lord came into her vicinity and the Lord lifted her up out of her sick bed. And when she got up out of her sick bed, uh, she went and spread the news in her community about who Jesus was. And because she spread the news about who Jesus was, there were some folk whose faith story was shaped. There were some folk who were able to say, I know he's a miracle worker because of Simon's mother-in-law. And so let me say to those of you who these many years that we have celebrated black history. Those of us who continue to be frustrated by the folk who say to us, why the fuss about folk in the past? This ain't no fuss. 
This is us telling the story of folk who were noteworthy. You see, my brothers and my sisters, it's important to tell the story of folk who did something good in the past. I know we're going through a moment we're in the past is excluded from our existence. But Mark is saying to us, don't throw away your past. If somebody in your culture has done something good in your past during Black History Month, you ought to shout it from the rooftops. You ought to tell somebody that we are a group of people out of whom some good things came. I wish I had a witness up in here. That's what black history is about. It's about telling our story and the reason we gotta tell our story is because nobody will tell our story like our story should be told have you ever went to a Martin Luther King day and you heard somebody outside of the culture tell the story of a great African American somebody who did something notable and they talked about them somebody like Martin Luther King Jr. and you found yourself saying that's not what we know in the African American community and so my brothers and my sisters if we don't tell our story of our people somebody else will tell our story somebody else will fudge our story somebody else will profit off our story somebody else will misguide our people but if we know our story and we tell our story about notable people when the story is told, we can identify with the story. Our sons and our daughters can identify with the story. Our young men and our young women can identify with the stories. Is there anybody out there who can identify with the stories of the shapers of African American history. I'm talking about a history that's still being made today. Come on up, come on up a little bit closer. Let me tell you about how what happened in the past is still happening today. Good things are still being, are still being, are still being, are still being, are still being done in our culture in 2021. Can I go there? Yeah. Somebody ought to say, go there, Reverend. I'm going there. If you look at our history, notable deeds were not just done in the past. Notable deeds are being done today. If you don't believe me, go to the White House. Check out the Vice President. It's a sister. Kamala Harris doing notable stuff. If you don't believe me, 
go to Georgia and call up Reverend Raphael Warnack and you will find that he has done and is doing something notable in our existence. Can I stay right there in Georgia? Go to Georgia and call the name Stacy Abrams, a notable organizer. She's a sister, a sister who can organize a voting block like nobody else. Names like that ought not be shoved in a corner. But can I come to North Charleston? Go to North Charleston High. And there's a brother by the name of Henry Darby. Yeah. There's a brother by the name of Henry Darby. He's the principal of North Charleston. Y'all seen his story? Yeah. You ought to tell his story about how the Lord moved on his heart and caused him to go out and do something notable among all principles. Just in case you missed the story, can I tell you, Henry Darby went out, got a job at Walmart, gone and preached, man. I'm trying to do the best I can. I said he went out, got a job at Walmart, but he didn't put his check in his pocket. He donated what he made to help, to help poor people. That's notable. So when you ask yourself, or you hear somebody raise the question, what are we doing in 2021? As we celebrate black history, I want you to cry out with a loud voice. We're doing something. I'm coming home right about now. I'm celebrating. We are a people who are doing something noteworthy. We are community organizers. We are sacrificial principles. We are preachers of the gospel. We are leaders along the way. We are big dreamers. We are world changers. We are movers and shakers. We are people with a history of doing something notable. As we come this day, don't you be ashamed of who you are. Don't you be ashamed of your culture. No matter what somebody else says about what ought not be, you make it happen. You tell the story of African Americans who did notable things and are continuing to do notable things in our lives. It's biblical, but second, it's best that we tell our own story because nobody else can tell our story like us. Today, as we come in this service, first Sunday, Black History Month, I want to raise a question. Is there somebody out there, you are ashamed of who you are? You don't think you are important. You don't think you can be lifted and become somebody who's done something that's noteworthy, something that's worthy of being remembered. I say to you, you can. I can say that 
because I know who Jesus is. Jesus is a God who sets us up to do something that is worth remembering. Something that's noteworthy. Will you give your life to the Lord today? Will you say, Jesus, I don't feel important. I don't feel special. But take me like I am. And make me a notable brother or sister, young man or young lady on this day. I want you to know that for the asking, the Lord has responded to what you've asked for. He's working it out now for your good. May his peace be with you until it's time for the next preach word from this place. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, I invite you to take your kids out wherever you are. We are going to consecrate your communion at this time. Let us say together the general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Give us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, the consecration. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and grant that we receiving these your creatures of bread and wine. According to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be made partakers of his most blessed body and blood. On the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. And now my brothers and my sisters, I invite you to join me in peeling back the clear tab, access the bread. Let's break our bread together. Body of Jesus broken for you and for me. Keep us unto everlasting life. 
Let's eat together. Now, my brothers and my sisters, I invite you to peel back the purple tab and access the fruit of the vine. Let's drink together. The fruit of the vine is symbolic of the blood of Jesus, which was shed for you and for I to give us the power to do notable things. Blood of Jesus shed for you and for me. Let us drink together as one family. Now, after having eaten and drinking together, let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let us all say, Amen. I don't believe 
Shake somebody's hand. Tell somebody, I love you. Tell somebody, it's just good to be alive. And now, after having fellowshiped, I invite you to share in the benediction. God's grace, God's peace, God's power, God's power to cause us to be lifted, to do notable things, be with us not just on the first Sunday in Black History Month, but all the days of our lives. Let us all say, Amen.